Well, hello there. Uh, welcome to Circuits. Um, so this video is the first of the lecture videos. The lecture videos are the technical material. Um, the classroom Zooms that you'll also be part of um, will have more information on how the class works and grading and assignments and things like that. So this is just going through the material you're supposed to learn. So let's get started. The first module here is uh, just going over some basic terminology, uh, words that you'll have to learn, because um, we'll be using them all semester. So most of these slides are taken from the textbook, so I do recommend the textbook and I want to acknowledge uh, the slides that come with this textbook. Thank you for the, to the authors uh, here for creating this material. So some terminology or nomenclature here is um, when we're using capitals and lowercase. To be honest, in the lectures and material that I prepare, I'm not quite as careful, a little sloppier, but this is a general rule. Lowercase um, may or may not be time varying. It's just a general thing. So I is for current, V for voltage, and so forth. If it has the parentheses with T, then it definitely is time varying, not constant. Capital is generally used by the book for constant values, DC values. And bold is vectors or phasers, complex numbers, special things like that. So in circuits, the prefixes are very important because some quantities uh, range in their magnitudes by quite a bit. So keep this table where you can find it and you'll need it for things like exams when we say nano or pico, um, all of these things come up a lot in circuit values for resistors and capacitors and things like that. We generally use the metric system for all of our units, so you should be familiar with those from physics. One really important tip that I can tell you right now is when you see these prefixes, and you're typing values in your calculator, don't shift the decimal point on your own. You know, if it's a, a kilogram or something like that, you might be used to just moving the decimal point three places and you can get away with that. When it comes to micro and nano and all of these, it, you can spend a lot of time and it's easy to type five zeros instead of six or something like that. And there's a button on your calculator, the scientific notation button, it's usually the E or the EE, sometimes EXP. Some of those are the natural logarithm complement, though, so make sure you're using the right one. Scientific notation, most uh, spreadsheets and computer programs use this letter E here. So if it's nanofarads, 23.4 nanofarads, nano means 10 to the minus 9. So rather than trying to shift the decimal place 9, times and put in all the right zeros and everything, you can type it in your calculator, 23.4 times 10 to the minus 9, and, and you're done. You just transpose that nano is minus 9, micro is minus 6, and so forth. Um, using that scientific notation button is the fast way. Sometimes I see students use the power times 10 to the minus 9. This is the same number, right? But the, um, the math behind how the calculator does it, uh, this is much slower. This scientific notation, it's just moving the decimal point. This one is actually calculating 10 to the negative ninth power. Um, so on a calculator, it doesn't matter at all. If you were doing a million calculations on a computer, this could seriously slow down your math compared to something like this. So keep that in mind if you're ever writing um, computationally intensive programs or something. So in this class, we'll be mostly using schematics or circuit diagrams as representations of actual circuits. And we won't see actual circuits very often, except in the lab where you'll be building them yourself. But it's important to remember that, that those are models of actual systems. So this is a circuit board with actual components. You can see how a circuit board has got traces on it for the wires. And this can be modeled as a drawing like this, a circuit diagram or a schematic. Sometimes it's a more physical thing with no circuit board, just wires connecting things. But that can also be written as a circuit diagram or a schematic. In this class, generally, we just start and end with the circuit diagrams. 
In the circuit diagrams, there are a lot of common um, elements that you'll get used to and then you'll learn about. So things like resistors, this jagged line compared to an inductor that's curly, variable resistors, capacitors, power sources. This is a DC voltage source with two lines. This is an AC voltage source with the, the sine wave in between the plus and the minus. If this little curve isn't there, then it would be a DC source. So the, the circle can be used for DC, depending on who's drawing the pictures and um, what program they're using. Uh, current source is a circle with an arrow. Switches look like this with the two dots and the arrow. Um, operational amplifiers or op amps we'll be seeing later. Transistors and dependent voltage sources and dependent current sources. These are models of more sophisticated um, circuit elements, usually a bunch of things together that give you this behavior. And they have the diamond shape as opposed to the circle. So if you see the diamond, um, don't panic, but you'll have to do a little more work. Uh, diodes and LEDs have this arrow with the little whiskers on the front. For connecting elements together, we have conductors, just generally a line. Um, when they're joined, generally crossing them joined. Sometimes you'll see a dot. Sometimes you'll see a hop here to make it clear that they're not joined. There are different conventions, um, so again, you'll, you'll be able to understand it with some practice. So the names of the circuit diagram are really important because we're going to do things like node analysis where we write an equation for each node and mesh analysis where we write an equation for each mesh. So if you don't know what a node or a mesh are, then you'll have trouble. You'll have too many equations or not enough equations and you won't be able to solve them. So um, starting off with a branch is any single element with wires coming out. So this resistor here, that's that's a branch. And then a node is where we connect two branches together. So here's a node labeled N1. Here's a node labeled N2. This book uses ordinary node when there are just two wires coming together, an extraordinary node when there's three or more. Generally, we just call them nodes. Um, and it's important to see where the nodes are. Um, loop is a closed path, so a path is a series of branches, um, and so loops are another part of the analysis. We have to see the, the loops. So node is a really important one. Loops define meshes, and that's another really important one. And we'll see this as we go along. It's just important to, to start getting it right in the beginning. Okay, so planar circuits <clears throat> means that you can draw it without something going over the top. So here in this drawing, we do have a resistor that is hopping over this resistor, but this could be redrawn just going around the outside, which is what this picture shows. So this is a planar circuit. No, nothing needs to cross in order to, to work. So if you can draw them this way so that they're obviously planar. And some of our analyses make an assumption of um, planar circuits. So most of the analysis in the book is applied to planar circuits. So hopefully you've heard of series and parallel before. Um, when things are in series, when elements are in series, like these two light bulbs, they're connected, I think, of it as head to tail, so there's a plus and a minus, and the plus is connected to the minus of the next one, so the tail of this one connected to the head of that one. If you were an electron, if you went through one, you would have to go through the next one. That's in series. When elements are in series, they have the same current. The electrons are flow is the current, and so it has to be the same if they're in series. But the voltages can be different. If elements are in parallel, then the heads are all connected together and the tails are all connected together. If this is a voltage source here, then each element here, each of these light bulbs are going to receive the same voltage because they're connected together, even if this wasn't a voltage source. If you're in parallel, you always have the same voltage, um, but not the same current because an electron has to choose which path. You want to go this way or this way 
to get to the other side. You can do one or the other, but not both. So they'll both have the same voltage, but different current. So series and parallel, make sure you can identify those. If you get those wrong, you'll get things wrong. Okay, so this last slide has a lot of detail on here and a lot of terminology. So if this is too much to take in all at once, you can watch it again. Or look in your book, it goes through this in, in good detail in chapter one. So this is table one four from our textbook. So I'll go through the list of definitions here and point them out on this, this circuit diagram, this schematic. So ordinary node and extraordinary node we've talked about before. So there are nodes anywhere two things get connected, even if there isn't a dot. So this is a node, this is a node, this is a node, this is a node, this is a node. This is a node, all one big node here. And then this bottom, all in black, this is a single node, because there aren't elements separating things, they're just these lines. So sometimes to make the drawing clear, we like to have nice right angles in our drawing, we, um, we draw a single node like this. You, you could also imagine them all you know, flowing together and being twisted if they were actual wires, then it's pretty clear that they're a node. But this is the most common way to draw it, and you see it over here where this orange is all one node. So sometimes students will try to do node analysis where you write one equation for each node and they try to write an equation for each dot and that's a terrible mistake. So don't do that. There, there is, like this dot is a node, but that doesn't define what a node is. There's no dot here. There are too many dots here. So don't count the dots. Count the actual things that don't have, if there's, if there's no element, if there was a resistor down here at the bottom, then you'd have a node on this side and a node on this side. But because this is all one big bundle of wires, it's all the same node. Okay, so that's nodes, ordinary and extraordinary. Um, branches are um, a connection between two consecutive nodes. So here's a branch containing R1. A path is a continuous sequence of branches. An extraordinary path is a path between two extraordinary nodes. So we're defining paths so that we can do things like define loops. So a loop is a closed path with the same start and end node. So here's a loop. Loops are important to find because we use those in our analysis. Independent loop is a loop containing one or more branches not contained in any other independent loop. So if you've hit an element once, then you don't want to put it in the next loop. Here's a loop, loop one here, and then loop two uses part of loop one. And so you can see sometimes loops have new parts and old parts. These would be independent of each other because it has this branch that's not in loop one. And again, it's, it's important to figure these out so we can define meshes and write the right number of equations in our mesh analysis. So I'll show you some tricks when we get into that analysis in chapter two. And in series and in parallel, we've talked about before, but remember if they're in series, then the electron has to come out of one and into the other with no options. So R3 and C here are in series. If they're in parallel, then their heads are connected together and their tails are connected together. Sometimes if they're geometrically parallel like this, people think these are in parallel, but the head of R2 is connected to node one and this AC source is connected over here to a different node. So they're, they're geometrically parallel, but they're not in parallel electrically, so be careful with those things. All right, so spend some time learning these, particularly loops and nodes, because there's confusion that happens with those. Um, and let me know if you have any questions. All right, so that's the end of the first lecture in the first module. Um, the next part will be defining things like voltage, current, and power, which you've probably seen before but we will do again just to be safe. See you in the next video.